Hey, Renee. Hi, Annette. Okay, so the last time we talked, we talked about forgiveness some, but we touched very lightly on bitterness. And so that's what we're going to hit today is bitter, bitterness. It's not a something that somebody wants to tie to them. <laughs> Isn't there a saying about that? Saying? What's that saying about bitterness? Well, yeah, it's something you don't want to be tied yeah, I don't know. All I know is, as a woman, you don't want to be a bitter old woman. You don't want to be an old nag. Things like that. Well, bitterness is one of those things that can easily happen to those who have been victims, but also just everyday people who've been hurt or yeah. offended in yeah. any small, big way. And it can carry on for quite a while. Not it can not day. just carry on. It could actually go from one generation to the next. It's pretty sad on how bitterness, the root of bitterness can go so deep. Mm -hmm. um, I knew of it just because of um, race, where a family felt like this was a certain thing about these kind of people and these kind of people always cheated you, that type of thing. And so because the one family member had been cheated, they just passed that on from generation to generation and people believed it. Mm -hmm. And they weren't just cautious of the other race. They were bitter because they cheated their great grandma. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. that bitterness just was carried on, which was crazy. It didn't, you know, didn't happen to them. Right. But that's not what Christ wants us to do when we're been hurt by somebody or offended by somebody. Right. We touched base previously in another video about forgiveness is what Christ wants us to do. Right. Versus owning and allowing the bitterness to take residency, giving them a little, little cheer on your porch. Uh, that, that root of bitterness grows unless you go ahead and surrender it to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And we could be all righteous and say, but we have all right to be upset. We have all right. But it still goes back to, we need to get rid of that root of bitterness or it's just going to make us these from bitterness. It goes to anger and rage and malice. And then you, we'll just take action in it and we don't want that at all yeah and then we become slanderous yes it, absolutely it, it becomes more than just the feeling or the thinking but then it comes out of our mouth it will come out of our mouth and then come out of our actions as well right you know, i i heard of people being so bitter where the slashing of the tires and you know they take yeah. it into their own hands. The vengeance is mine, they say themselves, because that bitterness has just festered, festered, festered. The Ephesians 4.31 talks about the verse exactly as we've explained it. And it but it says at the beginning of mm. all of that anger, malice, slander, it says to get rid of it. And that means to surrender it over to Christ. And that can be hard, especially... Let's say if it's someone you had mentioned before when we were talking earlier today that you work with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's one thing I have had many people come and share with me is like, oh man, at work it's, it's just so annoying because there's this one person. And that's one thing that I've always taught to the younger ones starting their first jobs and stuff. There's always going to be that one person. There's always going to be... You know, that's, it's human nature to have a difficult person at your job. But the one thing that seems to be tied to that difficult person is a bitterness, you know, a, a, a bitterness that kind of stirs the way they speak to you or the way that they ask for things or um, how they do their leadership or whatever. Whatever those actions are, there just seems to always be a tie to bitterness of some sort. <laughs> not good but i think we can all relate that we know somebody 
that we've met who has been bitter and bitter to the point of it affects their actions, their speech, even their demeanor, even the, the sounds that come out of their mouth. You know that. <laughs> sure. I could say that I've seen it in myself. Absolutely. Myself and it's too. pretty ugly. And so that's why it's just a continually renewing in the Holy Spirit daily. So that grace will flow through to others. So a situation can be smoother. And it well, would be I difficult working with somebody who was negative all the time or controlling or a micromanager, all, all of that. But again, we're supposed to forgive easily. And you need to pray and ask God, help me in this situation. What are my actions? What can I do that would be positive in this situation? True, true. And it's, it's easy to jump on the bandwagon and talk negative about that person, maybe because of something they have done. But I'll be honest, that was a situation of mine in the past. You know, previous job that I had, I wasn't in agreement with, you know, my leadership. And I became bitter about it because I, I saw employees being abused. I'm just going to say it. And bitterness was becoming, was starting to grow. I left that place, but I found that when the friends who were familiar with it would talk to me, this little tinge would just happen inside. You know what I'm talking about? I know y'all know what I'm talking about. That just, it would just, it's the fire that was gone. All of a sudden, boom, it was back again. <laughs> oh, baby, we can talk about this all night, kind of. And I, that's when I realized, wow, I still got some things I got to deal with. I might have walked away and set my boundaries, but I was still walking with, with bitterness that was undealt with. I had to deal with that because I was not being supportive to these other people. I was, I was becoming a slanderer or a gossiper of that place when it was not, I wasn't supposed to be doing that. Do you know what I mean? Just that, oh yeah, they're no good. And oh yeah, they're just, uh, And everybody no. else was doing it. They were Christians too. And it just somehow morphed into this. We were all irritated, but that irritation became a bitterness. That party, took, yeah. Yes, and a bitterness party, yes. And that's when I realized is when I was in a conversation with someone else, bitterness had taken root and I had to deal with it with God. Now, it, I'm going to be honest, it didn't heal overnight for me. You know, when I went to God and said, take this away, it wasn't sunshine. <laughs> the next day, I wasn't flirting through the, you know, the fields and just happy. Uh, it was a work in progress for me. It was a, I had to keep giving it back to the Lord, recognizing the pieces that I had played and what I needed to ask God for forgiveness in as well, you know, and then learn to forgive that person as well and see the, the good in that person still. So I wasn't always holding on to this, my right to be bitter kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I think we can do that. <sighs> There's so many ways and places that I think we can easily hold on to bitterness in different situations because I've seen it even with high school friends and know it years later realized years later wow I still had this little tinge when their name would be said because I was irritated because he stole a girlfriend of mine you know who I was best friends with and now you know he got all the attention instead of Renee getting to hang out with her that kind of stuff you know and if it's not dealt with that bitterness just will take root and get ugly and can reside for years sure no bueno. <laughs> no bueno, yes. <laughs> but it also becomes that curse. It becomes the it becomes that not only like you said generational thing, but it can also be a curse that's coming out of your mouth towards a person. It's a spiritual thing as well when you hold on to it. I have learned. And so now I'm I'm trying to be so what's the word? I'm trying to be so eye opened at never holding on to bitterness it's a hard thing because it's you may not see it for a while it could be on your blind side as we had talked about yes. it could be on your blind side and you're not seeing it but those around you that are the closest could actually pick stuff off 
That's true. If you're brave enough to ask the question to them, hey, do you see that I might have bitterness towards someone? And boy, our children or our mates or our best friends might be able to easily say, yeah, it seems like when you talk about blank, there's something there. Yeah. So or when I talk about blank, you change the subject real quick or, you know, you can notice little, little nuances, little hints. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When I think of the root of bitterness, the way the Bible talks about it's, you can't see the roots in a plant. Usually they're in the ground. It's the fruit that's coming from it. And that's that rage. That's that anger. That's that slander that you had talked about and malice that's the fruit it's not the root and it's got to be yanked out by the yeah, yeah yeah there was a time when i was so bitter about my abuse that i wanted desperately to get the message across it was not the way that we're doing the message today and a way to joy at all <laughs> okay it was i want to get in front of the camera and I want to tell the whole story of what that person did to me. And I want to make it live. I want to blast it. And because I was so bitter, that turned into the anger, that turned into the rage. You know, I walked through all those steps. And just, I just want to blast that person for the pain that they had caused me, you know. And I'm grateful that I did not walk through what my emotions were trying to make me do <laughs> at the time. I had to work, still work through that forgiveness piece. I still had to identify my bitterness. And I realized that when I act out of bitterness, I can be very foolish. So there was a lesson learned. And thank God I did not go public with what I really wanted to do. I wanted to gather my whole family together, do a family circle and let me tell you everything. <laughs> let me educate you and do all that. And that's not what God was asking me to do. And had to learn my forgiveness and had to learn to give the bitterness up to God and learn God was going to give me the time and the place and God was going to work it out. And he has. I'm not that bitter old lady I used to be. That could have been my name at one time. <laughs> old I, was. Old day. I, I was. That was me. Well, may God fill everybody's heart with great joy when they go ahead and uproot that bitterness and ask for God's grace to fill it. Yes, in the name of Jesus, bitterness go, and Jesus' peace come in is what we invite in. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for talking about it, Renee. No problem. Good word. Thanks. Bye.